Come on in, come on in. Just wait in a few minutes here to see who would join us. It's a Wednesday evening. And of course, we are continuing our series here of just serving the Lord and of talking about Bible teaching convention. We are in a place of just studying the word of God. I just really felt over the last several weeks, just being prompted, I believe, by the Holy Spirit, that it would be that he wanted us to, to spend some time um, in his word, teaching, just sharing some things with you, which the Holy Spirit has put in my heart uh, during this season of time. And I believe that God wants to, to really um, show us something from his word. And so I want to welcome you. We're going to get ready. We're going to pray in just a minute. We're going to join in. And uh, why don't you encourage somebody to come in, share this with someone, and let's hear what the Holy Spirit will have to say to us. leave a comment as we share together this evening. It's good to be able to be with you this evening. Welcome again to another evening here of Getting Into the Word. My name is Peter Burnett, coming to you from the campus here of Emmanuel Caribbean University, a Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-empowered university, Christian university that God has raised up. God is expanded here in Montego Bay, Jamaica. If you're anywhere in Jamaica, if you're anywhere in the Caribbean, you're looking for a place to grow spiritually, a place to equip yourself for the work of the ministry. Uh, you have a burden or a call in pastoring, in evangelism, in youth ministry, children ministry, Christian counseling. As, as the Lord develops areas, we are opening up opportunities to study music, group music, group voice, group keyboard. We also open up a platform in partnership with external universities and colleges one of those colleges is Advanced Solution Techn Technical Institute in Trinidad, where we can help you with all kinds of careers in, in computer, cyber security, um, in uh, property management certification. A lot of certification areas are where people are already working. We're able to help you to make that connection. So I wanted to just uh, let everybody know about that, that Emmanuel Caribbean University is a place that you should consider. I believe that God has called us to equip soldiers for Christ, soldiers of Christ to do what call, God has called them to do. Interestingly, we have a, a, an event coming up here in July, July the 7th and the 8th. We have an evangelism seminar, evangelism workshop is what we call it, um, July 7th, July 8th. And there's still opportunity for you to sign up for it. If you go to our website, you can go to ecujamaica.com. That's ecujamaica.com, and you'll have an opportunity to be able to, you know, to participate and to come out, to sign up, bring the evangelism team of your church, bring your brothers and sisters, let us share in this tremendous opportunity. In fact, I really do believe that the evangelism uh, workshop will be a tremendous, uh, really, uh, time for believers to be, to receive instruction. 
you know, God wants us to receive instruction. He wants us to be built up. He wants us to be made whole. So come on out. Uh, you know, who should come? Well, any Christian should come because if you want to have confidence in sharing your testimony, you want to have confidence in just uh, explaining the gospel. A lot of people enjoy the gospel. A lot of people are uh, changed by the gospel, but they don't have confidence in sharing the gospel. So come out um, July the 7th. That's a Friday evening. And then Saturday from 9 to about 3. And we want to invite you to come out here. Go to our website, ecujamaica.com. Call us at 876 953 8596. In fact, you can call us right now if you'd like to. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to be able to give you information on this uh, evangelism boot camp. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's get right into the word tonight. Our theme for today is dealing with the issue of a biblical worldview. What is a biblical worldview? What is the importance of having a biblical worldview? A lot of people you talk to them, I don't have a philosophy, I don't have a perspective, I don't have any views about those things. In fact, some people say, well, I stay away from those things because that's why we, we have wars. Yeah? And they, they always quick to say, well, you know, religion cause wars or politics cause wars and, and these different things. And people will, will, will say, you know, hey, I do not have any kind of religion or I don't have any philosophy or my worldview. I saw the worldview and I wonder if you have this worldview. Uh, the worldview was life is just for living. Someone said, well, I don't have a worldview. Uh, I just believe life is for living. But can I tell you that is a worldview? Exactly. If you say life is for living, that is not just, you know, something you just pick out of nowhere. You actually believe a, a particular approach to life. And you, your understanding or your, your decision is to come down on a place that says, I don't have to have any values probably, or I just, I'm not going to stress about God and all those things. I'm just going to live my life. But that's a worldview because you're going to approach your relationships. You're going to approach God. You're going to approach the Bible. You're going to approach your country. You're going to approach everything about you with that mindset of, you know what? It's just for living. It's not going to last. It's, there's nothing after death. Even the attitude of saying, well, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing after death. You know, when you, when you say that there's nothing after death, well, you made a decision. That's a worldview. Your worldview is then when you say that. And, and, and by the way, when I say this, it's a don't judge me. It, it's okay for you to judge yourself. It's okay for someone to say to you, this is what you're saying. Now you can say they're wrong, but don't say, you know, don't, make a statement and then when somebody call you out on the statement you take to the person don't judge me uh that in itself is not honesty it's not being honesty to honorable to the person you're talking to or to yourself when you make a statement you make a judgment statement you declare your worldview but then when somebody call you out on your worldview you're going to tell them don't judge me don't tell me what well how can we have a conversation like that? That's not being honest. And so one of the first things that we have to be willing to do as we have a conversation about worldview or philosophy or perspective of life is to be honest, to be willing to be honest with what we are thinking, be willing to be humble, be willing to be open and to listen to each other, my friends. It's impossible for us to uh, learn if we just say, well, I don't want to hear from you. We need to be able to hear. And when I hear something that convicts me or that challenges what I believe, then I also need to be humble enough, not prideful, but willing enough, not so stuck in my way to be able to listen again, to listen and so I want to say to you, I'm going to talk about some worldview tonight. Some and and the, the I, I just pray that you'll be open to say, Lord, is that me? Lord, where am I in this idea of worldview? 
I'm going to be talking about the biblical worldview concerning the church tomorrow. And then on Friday, we're going to talk about the biblical worldview concerning our nations, the world. Because I believe that's important for us to see the world, see the nation as God says, as the Bible says. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front that, you know, I've been saved. I was a young man, about nine years old, little boy, when I accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Since that time, I have, you know, traveled a little bit. I've studied the word of God. I've preached in different places. I've read through the Bible. I've gone to college and universities and so forth. And I must tell you, friends, that with all the things that I've lived in life, I've been married now 36 years. We have four children. I've met a lot of people. I've read a lot of books, a lot of newspapers. Oh, my goodness. How many Sunday papers? Sunday paper, and all, all these newspapers I've read, read things online. I've watched the news. I've, I, so I've not been living in a bubble. I have not been living in a bubble. I have listened to speeches. I have listened to politicians. I've read different things. And I'm here to tell you, my friends, that the view of God that I understood and the view of the world that I understood and that came to me and pointed was pointed to me in the Bible has only been reinforced by my journey in life. My journey in life so far, I'm almost a few years away from 60. I have journeyed and been a lot of different places, seen a lot. I was there when there was 9-11. I heard, I mean, all kind of stuff we have heard and listened and experienced in life. Good, bad, and ugly, right? And I'm here to tell you that as for me, like Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, I have formed and I have seen that the biblical worldview has stood the test of time. Uh, the biblical worldview have proven itself in producing a life of peace, joy, settledness, consistency, uh, a journey through life where you don't, may not have all the answers, but you know where the answers can be found. That's what I found by having a biblical worldview. I have found where the answers can be found. I have found where the fountain of truth lies and I can go somewhere to find truth. All right. So that I want to tell you that what I'm going to talk about today is coming from that view. I, in my own personal life and testimony, and in, in, in a short period of time, you know, you know, I, I, I haven't been around a long, long time. But in my short time, in the many experiences that I have, and listening to others and observing the experiences of others, looking at things that have gone on, I've found, my friend, that instead of it contradicting the Bible, it has reinforced the Bible. You know, some people say the more educated you get, uh, the more schooling you get, the more knowledge and you turn away from God. I've found that to be the opposite. I found that to be the opposite. I'm telling you, I've been to a lot of different colleges all the way up to the highest level in, 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 um, in our field of education and in education. And I'm here to have two master's degree. I mean, different things that we have studied a lot. The Lord has given me a lot of opportunity in studying different things and studying the word and being alive in the earth. But I tell you something, it has not taken away from me the importance of the Holy Ghost in my life or the truth of the word of God in my life, it has only reinforced it. And I'm, I must tell you, I'm not alone. I'm not an, an anomaly. I'm not abnormal. There are millions of people around the world who have built their lives with a biblical worldview. A biblical worldview. They have staked the claim of their future on the word of God. They're not in a box. They're not living in a monastery. They're not isolated from people. They are engaged. They're at work. They are ordinary. They are, I mean, they're walking through. Life has not always been easy, but we know where the truth lies. 
life has not, and the experiences of life has not always been fear and, and been, you know, you get what you deserve, but we have found where peace and happiness lies. We have not always have clarity in what the things is going to happen and know what's going to go happen tomorrow. But we have, we have found who holds tomorrow. There is a sense of peace. There's a sense of joy. There's a sense of consistency. There's a sense of hope. There's a sense of purpose that has come as a result of the biblical worldview that I was introduced to as a young boy and that I have been walking in all these years. You know, the Bible tells us one thing. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 17. And I saw this scripture and I want you to realize that uh, the Bible speaks to a lot of the confusion going on today. Psalm 17, it's, and it tells us uh, that uh, verse three, thou hast proved my heart, thou hast visited me in the night, thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. This is uh, Psalm 17, verse four now. Concerning the works of men, by the words of thy life, I have kept me from the path of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in thy path that my foot slipped not. The psalmist Davis had a biblical worldview. He approached life with a recognition of God Almighty as the being, the creator and father and the one to whom all men are accountable. It was a biblical worldview. Recognize that we are not God. He is God and that there is an accountability that all men face. And that's the biblical worldview. David said, I have called upon you. You will hear me, O God. Incline thy ear unto me and hear my speech. That's a biblical worldview. Believing that there is a God who hears, a God that man, human, ordinary man, woman, boys, a girl, can literally speak to this God. He can hear them. He will incline their ear to them. He will hear their speech, whether it's in English, whether it is in uh, some in Patwa or whether it's in, in Creole or French or Portuguese or Chinese, God hears. That's a biblical mindset that we are not alone, that we actually can have audience with the eternal God. And it says in verse seven, show thy marvelous loving kindness. O thou that savest by thy right hand them we who put their trust in thee. That's a biblical mindset. Mindset is that there is a measure of supernatural aid and help that we need at certain times in our lives. That it's not just up to our smarts, our muscles, our power, our money. But there's a sense of humility in spite of how much money we have, in spite of our education, in spite of, there's a sense of humility to say, I will need the saving power of God's right hand. I may do all that I can, but I always will need God. No matter how high I climb on the ladder, I will always need. So I always need him. I always want to talk to him and I will trust him to save me. It says in verse eight, keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who compass me. They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth, they speak proudly. Here again, the biblical worldview is an understanding of life that there are wickedness and wicked people and wicked demonic work that would want to oppress us, that would want to encompass us, that they would want to speak evil about against us and to push us down. And yes, 
We need to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Yes, we need to protect ourselves, but we realize that there's a dimension of protection from the wicked, a dimension of protection from the deadly enemies that God alone can give. You know, having God watching your back and knowing that you are not alone in the conflict of life, whether you're in the city, the suburb, the ghetto, uptown or downtown, to know that God guards you and, and protects you, just like the anthem here in Jamaica, eternal father, bless our land, guard us, guard us with thy mighty hand. When we recognize that God guards us, God protects us, it brings a level of peace. It brings a level of consistency. It brings a level of settledness and purposefulness in life. I mean, for example, if your worldview is life is just for living, well, you have denied yourself of the blessing of the loving kindness of God because you have said in that worldview, nothing really matters. Nothing is really of value. Another worldview that is existing today, which I want to bring up, is I am living life to the fullest. I am living life to the fullest. That mindset, and that worldview is self-centered. I am living life. The idea is I just want to be happy. I just want to have, you know, just, just have love. I just want to have parties. I just live in life. Somebody says, you live in life. Well, if you ignore God out of the journey of life, you're really not living life according to the Bible. This is the biblical worldview. In the world's worldview, you're living life when you ignore God. But God, the Almighty, challenges that view. Another one that I see here, in our nation here in Jamaica and in the Caribbean and in the Western world, one of those are this worldview is made popular through the, the many songs of some of the great reggae singers coming out of Jamaica. And the worldview, the view of world, the view of life, the perspective of how to live. Uh, somebody would say the liberty of life is that those of us who have African heritage, we were stolen out of Africa and left in Jamaica. And the whole mindset and the view is that Babylon, this is Babylon. Jamaica is Babylon. The Western world is Babylon. America is Babylon. This is oppression and the systems of men. And so the view really of that worldview is that it's not God who gave me birth and allowed me to be born in Jamaica, but some man or woman of a different color with power brought me here and sold me here. Now you can realize, my friend, that that worldview is very dark, hopeless, depressing. It really gives no purpose to life. It caused you to be a perpetual victim. And indeed, instead of celebrating the history and the victory of our four parents who went through the wicked passage of the transatlantic slave markets and who went through slavery and overcame where their sons and daughters are ruling nations and are leaders and doctors and now masters, so to speak, deciders of what happens in our own destiny. I believe it is a slap in the face of the resiliency and of their hard work and the prayer and the success of our forefathers for us to have a worldview that say, today in the 21st century, somebody stole us from Africa and brought us to Jamaica. That's an ungodly mindset. That's not a biblical worldview. But people live their life like that. I know men, many of our men here in Jamaica, we have a, a deep wound in 
the psyche and in the society of our nation because a large amount of our men have the worldview that Jamaica is Babylon, that the system is Babylon. They approach the woman they love, they approach the children they bring into the world, they approach taking care of the nation, they approach living in the country and caring for the future of the country. They have no work of legacy in the nation because this is Babylon. Why would you want to build up Babylon? Why would you want to protect Babylon? Why would you want to develop Babylon? See, that worldview is ungodly, it's unsustainable, and it is destructive. In fact, we are feeling the impact of, of that. But the biblical worldview back in Psalm 17 tells us that they have, um, the, verse 11, 17 verse 11, they have now compassed, compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him and cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Now listen, what is he talking about? From verse 14. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world, which have their portions in this life. Life is for living. They have their portions in this life, whose belly thou, thou fillest with thy hidden treasure. They are full of children, and they leave the rest of their abundance to their babies. So we have a, the mindset, the worldview of the wicked, of those who are men of the world, men of money, men whose worldview is about making money only, men whose worldview is about sex and more sex only, men whose worldview is about power and more power, worldview is about protection and gangs and, and stuff and getting and getting and getting. That's a worldview. So what I'm not, I don't have a worldview. I'm not a Christian. I don't have a worldview because I'm not into this. No, everyone have a particular way of looking at the world. Everyone has a perspective. Everyone has a philosophy. Many of people today that are listening, if I ask you, who is your favorite artist? Who do you listen to? You know, when I was in the U.S. and uh, Tupac was killed, people were quoting him over and over in conversations. Their worldview was shaped by his music. Then you have another group. Well, they're going to say Biggie. Biggs is a band. Their worldview. Today, you have many, many singers of rap music. Many, many singers of dancehall music. We have, we have experienced it with many, many singers of Rastafarian reggae music. Rastafarian reggae music. All of these are evangelizing with a particular worldview. Everybody has a worldview. So the men of the world have their portion in this life. The men of the world have a worldview that ends when they die. The men of the world has a worldview that does not include eternal life through Jesus Christ. The men of the world consider their belly, consider what they can get for their own legacy, what they can pass on to their own children, what they can build up and in terms of a name for themselves, men of the world. But David said this, and I, I want you to know that we want to talk about the biblical world view. But David said, as for me, this is Psalm 17, verse uh, 15. He said, as for me, as for me, what, what's your worldview? What, what, what drive, how, what do you think about the world? What do you think about the future of the world? What do you think about marriage? What do you think about family? What do you think about your nation? What do you think about money? What do you think about, you know, what's going to happen? Where do you get your viewpoint from? You know, the psalmist David said, as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in 
thy likeness. Now, what satisfies you? What, what gives you a sense of, of purpose or a sense that, you know what, I, I'm okay? You know, I, I want to say to you, those of you that uh, denigrate the Christian or the biblical worldview, can I ask you a question? Why are you drinking so much alcohol? Why you need to party so much? Why do you have that unsettledness and that restlessness in your spirit? Why do you need, why are so many of our men and women suddenly smoking all kind of ganja? Why, what's going on? If your worldview is working, is it aligned? Is it bringing you peace? Is it bringing you joy? Here's what the scripture says in Philippians chapter four. And this is the biblical worldview. You have a choice, you have a chance. You know, you don't have to believe what the Bible says, but my question is, is what you're believing bringing you peace? You know, I was talking to a young man the other day and he was unwilling to humble himself before God and the biblical worldview. His view was, well, it was really interesting because he, part of what he believed, what he said he believed was the Bible. So it's the end times. So he used the term, it's the end times, which comes from the Bible, right? But then he mixes it with all these dancehall singers and doom, gloom, and all these things. So he says, it's the end time and nothing can change. That's what he says. He says, that it's going to get worse. There's going to be demons. People get demonized. And he painted this dark picture. And you would think he was quoting the Bible. He started with saying something from the Bible. But it was not a biblical worldview. Because a biblical worldview is focused on Jesus. The biblical worldview is anchored on Jesus. The biblical worldview always take in mind that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, that there was a son of God who was, who was living in the earth, that he did these miracles as recorded by the Bible, that he died, that he was crucified, he died, he went to the pit of hell, he rose again in resurrection, and that he's now seated at the right hand of God the Father. That's all the biblical worldview, that Jesus Christ is King of Kings, and Lord of Lord of the entire world, and that Jesus is alive. So we look at problems, we look at wars, we look at disappointment, we look at all of those things, and we bring it next to the cross. We bring it next to the cross. The cross becomes the measuring stick of life. So there's consistency. There is purpose. There is peace. There is settlement with the biblical worldview. Look at these worldview. Listen to your artists. Listen to the, your favorite singers. Listen to what they are saying. Don't just rock your body to the beat. Listen to their worldview. Can you tell me what is the worldview of Beyonce? Can you tell me what is the worldview of Drake? Can you tell me what was the worldview of Tupac? Can you tell me what was the worldview of Michael Jackson? Can you tell me what is the worldview of, you know, of, of uh, any of the artists, of Garth Brooks or any of the artists that you may listen to today? It's very important that you know the worldview of your teachers, those who are influencing you. You know, somebody said Tina Turner just passed away not long ago. She sang. What love got to do it all? You know, different singers have sang these songs. We'll talk about that another time. But let's look at um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. See, that's what a biblical mindset. So you come from a place of truth, believing that there is truth. By the way, that's another worldview. There's nothing truth. That's a worldview. You're going to tell me what's true to you is to you. What's true to me is to me. Okay, well, why do you say that? What led you to come to that conclusion 
that you and I don't have an objective truth. That mindset to say there's no objective truth is a worldview. You have chosen a worldview of ignoring truth. That's a worldview. And unless you're willing to humble ourselves, then we will, we will fake our way through. So the Bible says there is truth. So whatever things are true, then it says whatever things are honest. So there is honesty. Well, when it's honest to you, if it's, you know, if you, if, if it's okay with you, it's okay with you. No, it's a lie. There is such a thing as a lie, truth. There's such a thing as dishonesty and whatever things are honest. And then it says, whatsoever things are just. There are some things that are just. That is right. It's the way it should be. You know, like when the bicycle wheel is off and it's wobbling, wobbling, it's unjustified. But when it's justified, it, it just flows right. Whatsoever things are pure, there are things that are still pure in the world. I mean, have you come to a, a, a worldview that there's nothing pure? Just, ah, no, no, that's old. That's old. Nothing is pure. You have given up on mankind. You've given up on mankind, haven't you? You have given up on yourself. You have thrown away the gospel. But somebody told you that. How did you come to that conclusion? So the biblical worldview said there is purity in the world. There are things that are just. There are things that are, that are honest. There are things that are true. It says, whatsoever things are lovely. There are lovely things in the world. Innocence is still of God and of humanity. And people are invited to that. Whatsoever things are of good report. There are some things that are bad report. But there are good reports still in the world. Then the Bible says, there be any virtue. Oh, my brothers and sisters, virtue, virtue. Virtue is a sense of integrity. Virtue speaks of inner resiliency, inner commitment to truth and righteousness. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, praise. It says, think on these things. So our thinking is a manifestation of our decisions, our thinking, what we keep thinking on, what we keep going back to, can help us to understand what our worldview is. And when we listen to ourselves, when we face a situation and what we begin to think about. So what I'm saying to you tonight in tonight's teaching is think about what you're thinking about when you face a challenge. Think about what you're thinking about when you're thinking about life. Think about what you're thinking about when you are doing something. And what you think about, that will help you to find out what worldview animates you, moves you. Father, I just pray today in the name of Jesus Christ that any person listen to me who has been deceived, because we see in the book of Revelation that at the end of the age, you're going to take the dragon, the deceiver, and throw him into the pit. I pray for anyone who's listening to me, God, who is deceived and hold a worldview that is anti-biblical. A worldview that does not have at its core the gospel and the good news of the coming of Jesus. I pray that you will deliver them from that deception. I pray you'll stir them tonight to know that there is truth, that there is honesty, there is lovely, there is virtue, there is integrity. There are things that are worthy of praise. There are things that are worthy of honor and that there is a God who is actually alive, separate from the activity of men. That they will not be deceived to think of you as a thought or energy or the corporate force of men, but that you are God, a personal God, a real God, that you are the God revealed in the Bible, God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. I pray you will awaken those that are Christians to a new commitment to biblical worldview. I thank you, Father. 
you know, in Joshua, there was a case when the children of Israel went into uh, Jericho and they went around several times and they saw the people in Jericho. There were 12 spies that were sent in. And the Bible says 10 of the spies came out. And the interesting thing was they had, they came up with grapes, they can with grapes the size of, of grapefruits, and I mean big luscious fruits. But they said, Oh, they are giants in the land. And we are like grasshoppers in their sight, and so were we in theirs. In other words, their worldview and their perspective, even though they were children of Israel, even though they were led there by the man of God, they heard the word of God. But when they faced the situation, they fell back into thinking of things that were not good, thinking of things that were anti the Bible. There were two spies, Jacob and Joshua, who, by the way, later at 80 years old, was able to enter into the promised land. 80. The others never made it because they believed the report of ungodly and unbiblical principles. So the Joshua said, you know, whose report will you believe? As for me and my house, we will have a biblical worldview. Whose report will you believe? Some of you are listening to me. Your political worldview is more important to you than a biblical worldview. Some of you here, you said, oh, I'm a millennial, I'm a Z this, or I'm a baby boomer. Your generational group's worldview is more important to you than a biblical worldview. Can I tell you, don't box yourself in to be a millennial or a uh, generation Z or A, B, C or blue. Just be a biblical minded person. And even when you reach 80 years old, you'll be able to enter your promised land. Amen. Amen. So now I want you to join me again tomorrow for we're going to continue this teaching. I want to talk about biblical worldview of the church. I find everybody have an opinion or a view of what the church is. And even us within the church, if we have an unbiblical worldview, we will not experience what the church really is. And then we're going to talk about the biblical worldview, worldview concerning nations. I really believe, brothers and sisters, that there is a view concerning our individual nations. I know here in Jamaica, we have so many churches per capita, and more than anywhere else in the world, we are told. Many, many, many hundreds of thousands of Christians, but yet we are wrestling with some things in our nation. And I believe part of that is because we need to develop a biblical worldview of nations, of nation. What is God saying? What is the Bible saying? So I pray you'll join me next week. Uh, when, tomorrow, actually, not next week. Join me tomorrow at 8 p.m. And we're going to continue another in our Bible teaching convention. And I just pray the Holy Spirit will touch your heart. I pray the Holy Spirit will indeed stir you. And I pray that you will learn something that you'll be able to, to, uh, you know, to bring to others and be able to help them in their walk with the Lord. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tomorrow night, we're going to continue in this teaching. Please leave a comment and um, we also going to put our information, if the Lord touches your heart, to support the ministry of Emmanuel Caribbean University, to stand with us, partner with us as we do this work of raising up a Christian university. Why don't you do that? We're going to leave the website information. You can go to our website, ecujamaica.com for that information or you can click on the link that I'm going to put in the post here. God bless you. Good night.